Okay, so I'm going to talk about the second exodus. Um, it's a huge, huge piece of information that a surprisingly few amount of people know about. And I was just thinking there that as an atheist growing up, you know, like I knew bits and pieces about the Bible. And, uh, you know, this is like, this is something that I could not believe was in here because it's so huge that I would have thought that this would have been, you know, one of those things that everyone talks about. But, um, yeah, like the church, they really just have no idea that this is in here. Um, and part of the reason why is because they don't know who they are. The church do not understand that to remain a Gentile is not a good thing. You don't want to be a Gentile because a Gentile by definition is someone who does not know God. Okay. Now, technically speaking, these Christians in the church, they are Gentiles because they're not in covenant and because they're not in covenant, they don't know God. Okay. But you don't want to remain a Gentile, of course. You want to be, uh, you want to repent, start to obey the holy covenants of promise, which is the Ten Commandments and to eat clean. And then you want to be grafted into the Commonwealth of Israel. Okay. Because only Israel is going to be saved. He's God is doing all of this for his name's sake, for Israel's sake. It's, it's for Israel because he wants his people to dwell in the kingdom with him. He wants the millennial reign to be full. Okay. So, potentially this spring, it may not be this spring, it's going to be a springtime event, no question about that. So many different things within prophecy, and then even just things that are going on, uh, you know, between the servants and the evil servants, um, things that are going on in the world. It really does look as though the sixth seal is going to open this spring. And when that opens, that marks the last three and a half year period of the world as we know it. Okay. And within those three and a half years, you're going to see great tribulation, the second exodus and the 144,000 being caught up to the throne, returning and executing the judgment of God on the earth. Okay. Now, the reason I'm going into this video on the second exodus today is because so many Christians are deceived by the rapture doctrine, which is just complete nonsense. It's nowhere in scripture. Okay. The only rapture scriptures that there are is just as always, it's just scriptures that they don't fully understand. They don't understand the context. They don't understand what's being quoted in those scriptures. So they just have to interpret for themselves what it means. And because they don't know who they are, they don't know that they are the lost, the, the northern kingdom of Israel scattered into the Gentiles. They think that they are Gentiles. So they don't know that this plan that God has to gather his lost sheep from the four corners of the world where he scattered them is really talking about them. Okay. So because they don't know this, they just have to create their own doctrines. Now, the reason why God is going to gather his lost sheep is because you've got Ezekiel 34 shepherds who were called, okay, when Yeshua says many called and few chosen, the reason why few are chosen is because few choose to enter into the work of the servant, okay? You've also got Jeremiah 23 wolves who are the pastors leading all of these churches and you know your elders within the churches so it's basically it's these two different groups of people who were given um this authority to lead god's people and to feed them but they won't feed them you know they only feed themselves so because god's lost sheep it says in ezekiel 34 that his lost sheep are scattered throughout the mountains and the hills. You know, that th they're in these churches and these synagogues. That's what the mountains and the hills are. Because his lost sheep are scattered into these churches and synagogues, and no one is feeding them, no one is trying to find them. And his lost sheep, his real lost sheep, 
They are hungry. They want to know God. But they're just being lied to and lied to and lied to. Okay? So, because of these evil shepherds, and because of these Jeremiah 23 wolves, God is going to gather his lost sheep himself. Okay? And the way he's going to do that is through the second exodus. So, I'm going to start in Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Okay, so this first little bit about the woman clothed with the sun, that's the Revelation 12 sign, the first one that uh, happened in September 2017. Okay, this woman pained to be uh, delivered and travailing in birth. This is the woman. The man-child that is born is the 144,000, okay? Now, this great red dragon who is uh, cast down to the earth and his tail draws a third part of the stars of heaven, this is Satan being cast down into America, okay? This happens in, you see it in Isaiah 28. It's all about the sixth seal, okay? Now, when it says that the woman flees into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two two hundred and three score days. This is the the lost sheep of the house of Israel being scat, uh, being gathered from the four corners of the world and being led through the wilderness, being led through on this second exodus throughout the tribulation, which is this three three and a half year period. That's what the the uh a thousand two hundred and three score days it's three and a half years. Okay, so we see this in Revelation here, okay, because no one really knows who the woman and the man-child is. You know, there's so many ridiculous ideas of who the man-child is. You know, people just have no idea. But, as I say, the woman is the church, it's the lost sheep, and the man-child is the 144,000. So, we're going to go to uh, Jeremiah 23. And you know, this second exodus, it is literally everywhere. It is all throughout prophecy. I couldn't, you know, if I were to read every single scripture, I would be here all night. So I'm, I am, I'm, it's probably going to be a long video. I'm reading some, uh, some big chapters here, but you know, it's, uh, it's essential that you understand this because this rapture doctrine is leading so many people astray. Because these Christians, they have, no, they, they have no idea what it is that God desires, okay? He wants you to repent from these ways of the, from the ways of the world and to come back to him. But the only way you can do that is if you repent and start obeying his holy covenants. And then you can return to him. And we see this throughout the, the throughout the scriptures I'm going to read. I'm just going to shut up and, and read the Bible, okay? So, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Okay? Speaks for itself. These pastors in the churches, you're all liars. You are lying to God's people. And he is going to punish you so severely for doing that. You've scattered and destroyed his 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 sheep. You've destroyed them. He's so angry at you. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you evil for your doings, saith the Lord. 
and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase. Okay, this is going to be in the millennial reign. He is going to punish you and he is going to hold you accountable for, for his lost sheep being scattered and destroyed. This punishment is coming straight on top of your head and it's going to be brutal. You're going into great tribulation and great tribulation is going to be the worst period in human history. And you're going head first into it. Okay, you have to understand the Old Testament to know what these things are talking about. Okay, Israel was scattered into Assyria because of disobedience. They were worshipping the Asherah pole. They were committing idolatry. So God divorces them and exiles them into Assyria. And they were supposed to return after the, after the 390 year period of punishment and exile, but they didn't. Okay, so because of that, Leviticus 26 comes into effect. And that is uh, that punishment is increased sevenfold to 2,730 years. Okay, so during that period of time from 722 BC to 2008, the lost sheep have just scattered to the four corners of the world. They're everywhere. Okay, this is why it says that God is going to gather them from all countries, whither I have scattered them. Okay, so they're everywhere. <clears throat> so they're going to be fruitful and increase. I will set shepherds over them, which shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. So God, because you've done such a terrible job, you're an absolute joke at your job. God is going to raise up these servants, these shepherds after his own heart, who are going to feed him. And you're looking at one of them. And I don't say it to boast. I just know the pit that God pulled me out of and I'm grateful to him. So I'm paying it forward. Okay. And I know that there's no way I should be able to understand the Bible the way that I do, if not for him and the spirit of truth. Okay. So he has given me everything that I know and I'm paying it forward and I am shame on your head. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. Okay, so there's two houses. There's two houses of, Is of well, of Israel, really. There is the house of Israel, and there's the house of Judah. Israel as a whole was split into two kingdoms in uh, first. Kings 11, okay? The 10 northern tribes and the two southern tribes. Judah is what we call the Jews, okay? So when you're saying, oh, this prophecy about Israel isn't for me, I'm not a Jew. A Jew is from Judah. That's what Jew even means, Judaite, okay? These prophecies of the house of Israel, of the northern kingdom of Israel scattered to the four corners of the world, if you're watching this and you're in the Christian church, it's about you. Therefore, sorry, Mr. Verse, in his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, the Lord liveth which, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country from all the countries where I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Like, how much clearer can it be? No more shall they say, the Lord liveth, which brought Israel out of Egypt, the first Exodus. But instead, people will say, the Lord liveth, which brought gathered the lost sheep of the house of Israel from the four corners of the world. The second exodus. The greater exodus. Okay? If if people aren't even going to be talking about the first exodus anymore, then this second exodus is going to be huge. My heart within me is broken because of the prophets. 
all my bro all my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, like a man who wine hath overcome, because of the Lord, because of the words of his holiness. For the land is full of adulterers. It's full of adulterers because you're all committing idolatry with your Christmas and your Easter. Okay? Idolatry is adultery. Because you're committing adultery, you're cheating on God with all of these false gods. It's all in Deuteronomy 32, in the new song of Moses. The song, the new song that the 144,000 are going to sing. You worship gods whom you know not. New gods who rise up all the time. Jesus Christ. He's not your Messiah. He is not your Messiah at all. You sure? The King of Kings. He is your Messiah. For the land is full of adulterers. For because of swearing the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. And their course is evil. Their force is not right. Both prophet and priest profane. Yea, in my house I have found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore their way shall be unto them as a slippery way in the darkness. Okay? Their way is going to lead them into darkness. First John tells you that if you love your brother, then you don't walk in the darkness, but you walk in light. Now, because you don't know what it means to love your brother, you have no idea that you're walking in the darkness. Because loving your brother means that you fulfill the royal law, which is in James 2, 8. And that's what it's calling loving your neighbor as yourself, which Leviticus 19, 15 and 18 defines as rebuking the sin out of the church. Now, because you're all respecters of persons and you're all just quite happy to sin and let your brother sin, you're just walking in darkness and you're on a slippery slope to hell. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation. You are going into tribulation because you won't repent. You won't repent. You're walking around there saying that we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments. That, oh, we're not under the law anymore. We're not under the sacrificial law. Not the Ten Commandments. Yeshua was prophesied in Deuteronomy 18 to come and teach the Ten Commandments. And Moses, uh, Peter tells you in Acts 3, he's quoting Deuteronomy 18. And he says that anyone who will not listen to that prophet, i.e. anyone who will not obey the Ten Commandments, will be cut off from amongst the people. Okay? So, because you won't keep the Ten Commandments and you won't fulfill the royal law, and even when the servants are raised up to warn you to do these things, you reject them and you won't listen to them, you're going into great tribulation. I have seen their folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. Okay, you prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. He's not the son of God. He's Baal. He's Baal. I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hand of evildoers, and none return from his wickedness. They are all unto they are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets. Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision out of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me. Thus saith the Lord, You shall have peace. And they say, everyone that walketh after their imagination of their own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. You're all full of this false peace. This false uh, entitlement. You think you're all going to get raptured out of here. Don't worry, you won't go through great tribulation. You're all going to be raptured out of here. Rapture ready. It's right here. It is right here. God is so angry with you, liars. Uh, why isn't that coming on? Hold on.
For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Yeah, who? Me and my brothers and sisters. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The whirlwind judgment is the man-child. They are the people who love the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And they bear the indignation of the Lord. They bear the anger of the Lord that he feels towards all of you liars. And so they're going to come upon you and destroy you. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, until he hath performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days you shall consider it perfectly. Okay, so you can't read this and say, oh, it's Jeremiah, it's the Old Testament, it's already been fulfilled. No. In the latter days you shall consider it perfectly. What else are you going to consider perfectly in the latter days? The fact that you're in great tribulation. Okay? Deuteronomy 4, 29 and 31 tells us that when you are in tribulation, in the latter days, if you repent and keep the Ten Commandments, God will show you mercy and he won't forsake you. And he will remember the covenant that he swore unto Abraham to be his people. I have, I have not sent, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from their evil doings. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far off? Can any man hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said, and that they prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of deceit of their own heart. Which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, and they tell every man to his neighbour that their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that dream the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. He that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? There therefore, behold, I am against the prophets. That saith, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbour. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues, and say, He saith. Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to error by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. So all you prophetesses out there who have these rapture dreams, you're all just bullshitting. Okay? Totally talking out of your ass. You say, oh, God showed me the rapture. God showed me this. God showed me that. He didn't show you anything. The spirit of truth is not in you because you don't keep his commandments and you don't fulfill the royal law. You, you don't have the spirit of God in you. I'm going to pause Jeremiah 23 there because well, this video is 25 minutes already and I've still got like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 chapters that I would like to read. Uh, I'm going to have, and I kind of remembered halfway through that that this is supposed to be about showing the second exodus but I was just, uh, Jeremiah 23 is just gets you riled up, you know. Uh, right. Let's go to Jeremiah 3. <clears throat> you know, though, Jeremiah 23, is a, this is why I wanted to start there, really. Because it shows you how angry God is at these people who were supposed to be feeding his, feeding his lost sheep. Okay? Now, the second exodus, he's shown those lost sheep mercy. Because you people just lie through your back teeth to them. 
You hate the lost sheep. You hate them. You just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie. And it's just so disgusting. You know, these people, they want to know God. And you're supposed to be the one teaching them. But you just speak lies. There's no truth in you. It's all darkness. <clears throat> okay, Jeremiah 3. So, you know, this is, I, I do just want to show you that the second exodus is right here. Okay, it's in prophecy. You have to understand it. Okay, but I do, I want you to understand that God has shown these lost sheep mercy by putting them on this exodus. Okay, and all these people who were supposed to be teaching them, who were supposed to be shepherding them, woe unto you. You are going to get so severely punished in great tribulation. And I don't say that with a smile on my face. I'm not pleased about it. I'm not glad. Because I know the prophecies of great tribulation. It's not, it's not something that I'm, you know, I'm not pleased about it. I don't want you to go into great tribulation. But I also want you to stop lying to his people. It would make my job a lot easier if we were all just telling them the truth. You know? Me and my brothers and sisters, there's like... <clears throat> there's 30 of us who are really doing the work. You know? Making these videos, making these tweets. We've got a website. We run these... Well, Andrew, I love... Andrew, I love you so much. That Bible... He does a Bible space every single day. Doesn't miss a beat. You know, two, three hours every night. For the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He doesn't do it for himself. He does it for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then these pastors... What, they get up once a week for 20 minutes. They'll try and worm their way through this book. And just lie through their back teeth. Andrew's given up his life. Mark has given up his life. Mark's given up the last 10 years of his life. You know, he's lost everything. He's lost everything to go and find you people. It's incredible. You know, I've been doing this for a year and a half. He's been doing it for 10. I can't imagine how hard it's been for that man. But I love him so much. And these wicked, wicked shepherds. These wicked pastors. And then these just disgusting people in the Torah movement. Who care more about feeding their own bellies. And running around doing their Passover and their unleavened bread. Ooh, look at my poppy seed unleavened bread. Oh, it's disgusting. To God, it's like you're eating a big steaming shit. Your feasts. It's just gross. It's gross. Okay? You don't care about his people at all. Alright? And if you did, then you would be doing what me and my brothers and sisters are doing. And I'm even convicted that I'm not doing enough. Why don't I make one of these videos every single day? Why don't I make multiple videos like this a day? It's a conviction that I have because I really care about the lost sheep. I do. And I want them to be found and I want them to know what this book says. Because I know that they're hungry. Okay? I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Come on. Jeremiah 3. They say, if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he again return unto her? Okay, so just context, setting the scene. God's saying, the lost sheep, Israel, they have committed adultery against him. They did. They committed adultery. They were worshipping the Asherah pole. You're all doing Christmas and Easter. You're all dirty whores. You've all been committing adultery. Okay. I did it as well. I'm not saying it's not me. I did it as well. We've all done it. We're all to blame. Okay? A man has left her husband. She's gone off and ran, ran off with another man. Can he take her back? That's what he's asking. Okay? Well, yeah. God can because he gave Yeshua. 
to fulfill that part of the the law. What is it, Romans 7? Shall not the land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes into the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with. In the ways that thou hast sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou wast polluted in the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain. And thou hast had a whore's forehead, thou refused to be ashamed. Will thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art, my gu thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger for ever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said, un the Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She hath gone up into every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turn thou, to, turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and and her, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. Okay, so, like I was explaining earlier, Israel they received this punishment for their idolatry, and they were allowed to return after three hundred and ninety years. But they didn't. They didn't return. Okay, and Judah, they had already returned because their punishment was only forty years. Judah, they were supposed to go and find their lost brothers and sisters. They were supposed to go and get them back. This is why Yeshua was rebuking the Pharisees all the time. He was saying, you're all just lazy. You, all you care about is this sacrificial law. <coughs> You've got your lost brothers and sisters out there. Go and find them. And they knew they were out there. The southern kingdom. They knew that they were out there. Of course they knew they were out there. When Yeshua said, where I go, you cannot come, the Pharisees said, oh, what, is he going to go out to the dispersed? The dispersed northern kingdom. Okay, so Judah is more treacherous because the law never departed from Judah and they knew that their brothers and sisters were lost. They were supposed to go out and find them, bring them back and teach them to keep the covenants. And I saw when for all her causes, for all the causes wherefore backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks, with Christmas trees and Easter bunnies. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. Okay, so this Torah movement, they'd all just worship Judah with the Azitzits and, you know, these profane feasts and, oh, shalom, shalom, achi. You just worship Judah, okay? But God sees your heart. You've turned unto him, but it's feignedly. It's a fake. It's a fraud. It's just, it's, it's. It's empty. You don't really care about God. Because if you did, you would go and find your brothers and sisters. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel has justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words to the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause my anger to fall upon you. For I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep my anger forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against the Lord thy God and have scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree and have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you and I will take you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Okay? This is talking about 144,000, these pastors, according to his heart, the pastors who love you, the pastors who love the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not the pastors in the churches, the people, the servants. And it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall 
No more say the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall that be done any more. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of God, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their own evil heart. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given them for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, how shall I put thee among the, the children and give thee a pleasant plant and a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, thou shalt call me my father, and thou shalt not turn away from me. Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way and have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord of our God. Sorry, thou art the Lord our God. Okay, return you backsliding children and I will heal your backslidings. Okay, Yeshua came and he was healing the blind and the sick and the lame. What was he actually doing? He was teaching them to keep the Ten Commandments like he was prophesied to come and do in Deuteronomy 18. Okay, to heal people means to teach them to obey God. That's how you're healed. Yes, Yeshua was physically healing these people as well. But it's a symbolic, spiritual gesture of teaching them to keep the Ten Commandments. That's what it's all about. But you people miss it. Because you don't know what your Messiah was prophesied to come and do. So you really actually don't have any faith in him. How can you have faith in him if you don't even know what it is that he was prophesied to come and do? It's common sense. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of the mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. Okay, so what did I say before? The hills and mountains are the churches and the synagogues. And he's literally telling you that in vain is your salvation hoped for. So all of you people in the churches and synagogues, your salvation is in vain because you aren't obeying God. You aren't listening to his voice. You aren't returning to him. You aren't actually doing the things that he wants you to do, which is keep the holy covenants and teach others to do so. Why is it so hard for you to get this through your thick skull? Why, why do you people on the left just insist on your lawlessness? Why don't you want to keep the Sabbath? Like, nowhere in scripture... Okay, so look, you got the sacrificial law that was actually done away with. Now, all throughout scripture, the sacrificial law is clearly a burden and a punishment and it's unpleasant and it's not something that um, pleased God to give these people. It was a punishment. Now, the Sabbath is very obviously a blessing. Everywhere in scripture, nowhere in scripture does it say, oh, the Sabbath was really horrible and we need to get rid of that. No, no, the Sabbath was a blessing. It still is a blessing. Why don't you want to keep it? Why are his commandments grievous to you? Well, that's because you don't love God. Because First John tells you that the love of God is that we keep his commandments and that they're not grievous. Okay, so people on the left, you just want to be lawless. People on the right, you just don't want to listen to the full instruction of God. So you realize, okay, we need to keep the commandments, but you don't actually start keeping them because you refuse to get rid of that covetousness. Because now you just run around doing the feasts. He's written unto you the great things of his law, Deuteronomy 12 and 16, but you count them as a strange thing. And so you do these feasts and you eat the meal and you prepare the Passover and you do all the trimmings, but he accepts them not. And because you've done that, He's going to put you into great tribulation because you were called to go and find the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but instead you fed your own belly. Okay, that's Ezekiel 34 and it's Hosea 8. Go and read it. 
For shame hath devoured the labour of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in our shame, and our confusion, confusion covereth us. But we have sinned against the Lord our God, and we, we and our fathers, from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of our God. Okay, <clears throat> Isaiah 11 is where I'm going next. This actually is just a short chapter, so this one won't take as long. Prophecy of Yeshua. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow from his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And they shall and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither approve after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity, no respect of persons, for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. John fourteen twelve. Yeshua tells you that everything that I have done, all the works that I have done, he who believes on me will do the same. So, if you really say that you believe in your Messiah, why are you not fulfilling the royal law? Because that is exactly what this is talking about. He is going to judge righteous judgment. He is going to judge with equity, with no respect of persons. He's going to slay the wicked with the breath of his lips. He is going to judge the world with his words. It's talking about the royal law. It's the communication of our lips, the sacrifice honorable to God. Hebrews 13. Why aren't you doing it? It's because you don't actually believe. Because your belief is superstition. You don't know what it means to believe God. You don't know what it means to believe in your Messiah. It's all superstition. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, and the young lions shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of an asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. And they shall not hurt nor destroy my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge as the waters cover the sea. So this is talking about, obviously, the millennial reign. Okay, it's complete peace, true peace, righteous peace. Okay, so this hasn't happened yet. Okay, the, we're, we're obviously, obviously we're not in the millennial reign. <laughs> like, what an idiot you'd have to be to believe that we were. Okay. Now, it goes on. And it says, In that day there shall be a root of Jesse which shall stand for an ensign to the people, and to it shall, seek, shall the Gentiles seek, and shall... And in his rest shall be glorious. Okay. So. <clears throat> Yeshua comes. He delivers the gospel into the world. And then he gives us 2,000 years. To enter into those works that I was just talking about. Okay. Because it's all leading towards this. Um, this millennial reign. He gives us 2,000 years. To get as many people in covenant. With God the Father. In time for the millennial reign. And all of you have just sat on your ass and done nothing. So get ready to be shame, full of shame. Get ready to be full of shame. You know, seriously, seriously full of shame. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in that day that the... Oh, uh, no. Yeah. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. The second time. He will recover his people. The Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush. 
and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the world. Okay, there you go. Just going to skip down to verse 16. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so come on. He is going to gather his people a second time. Well, his people are still scattered to the four corners of the world. I'm, I'm not dwelling in the inherited land. So, what's the deal there? Because it hasn't happened yet. Because it's still to come. Okay, so you can't read this and say, oh, it's already happened. Of course it hasn't happened. Okay, it's still to come. Okay, Isaiah 45. Yeah, this is a short chapter as well. All right. <clears throat> Just doing a quick scan to see if I need to read this full. Chapter. Okay, so it's talking about... All right, okay. So we're going to go from verse 15. Verily thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Saviour. They, Israel, shall be ashamed, and also confound, confounded all of them. And they shall go in confusion together that are makers of idols. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed, and you shall not be ashamed nor confounded. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Don't know if I'm just reading that wrong or if it's just funky phrasing. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. God himself, himself hath formed the earth and made it, and he hath established it. He created it in he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, you that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up wood of their graven, set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Jesus Christ. He can't save you. He's not going to save you. He's not the Son of God. Okay? Now, um, uh, there was a thought that I had earlier, and I cannot remember what it was, but it was really, really, it just drove that point home. Well, I mean, look, John 5, 43, Yeshua tells you that he comes in his father's name and you will not receive him. But if another comes in his own name, him you will receive. Okay, so this Jesus Christ, the reason why you all love him so much is because he's lawless. Your whole image of Jesus is that he, oh, he freed us from the Ten Commandments. We don't have to obey God anymore. You know, like that is what your Jesus is. But Yeshua, you don't like him because he comes in his father's name and he teaches you to obey God and keep the Ten Commandments. So instead you pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell you and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. 
a just God and a saviour. Oh, man. Well, that's okay. Uh, a just God and a saviour. I have sworn by myself the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and they shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. Surely shall one say in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come. All that are increased, all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Maybe I missed the bit about the second Exodus in here, but that was still good to read. I'm not sure. Okay, um, Ezekiel. Oh, wow. Okay, this is a big chapter. <clears throat> and it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Are you come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? <clears throat> Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel and lifted up my hand, unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt when I lifted my hand up unto them saying I am the Lord your God in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth of the land of Egypt into a land that I aspired for them flowing with milk and honey which is in the glory of all lands then said I unto them cast you away every man the abominations of his eyes and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Which is obviously exactly what they did. And it's exactly what you all do in the church now. Okay. So. When this second exodus happens. You can be absolutely damn sure. That he is not going to let you come back into that land. With all of your idols. So you best get rid of them now. Just do it early. Chuck them out. Repent from Christmas. Chuck out your graven images. Get rid of your cross necklaces. Get rid of all of your marriage statues and your Jesus statues. Just get rid of them. Get rid of them. It's not worth it. But they rebelled against me and would not listen unto me. They did not every man cast away the, the abominations of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake, for Israel, that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose eyes I, in whose sight I made myself known unto them, in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt, and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes, and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. Okay, so he brings them out of Egypt. He brings them to Mount Horeb and he gives them the verbal agreement to the Holy Covenant. Okay, which then he gives them written in stone at Sinai. So the Holy Covenant promised to Abraham, confirmed with Israel at Horeb, is the Ten Commandments. And it says right here that when he brought them out of Egypt, he led them in his ways, which if a man shall do, he shall live. So if you don't keep the Ten Commandments, you're going to die.
Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be assigned between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man shall do, he shall live in them. So you got two right off the bat there. You've got him saying, if you keep the Ten Commandments, you'll live. And if you enter into the judgments, you'll live. Well, what are the judgments? Loving your neighbor as yourself. Rebuking the sin. Keeping everyone in check so we're all doing a good job together. That's what it, that's what Israel was supposed to do. They didn't do it, so the sacrificial law was added. Yeshua comes, he takes away the sacrificial law, and he gives us a second chance to do it again. And you all just messed it up. Again. Okay? Like, come on, man. <sighs> and my Sabbaths, they greatly polluted. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness that I, sh that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, a land flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them from destroying them, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk you not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them. Hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, and they may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me, they walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man shall do, he shall live in them. They polluted my sab Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out forth. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them throughout the countries, because they have not executed my judgments, but have despised my statutes and polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. The sacrificial law, which was a punishment. Okay, That's what Yeshua put an end to. Praise Yah that I just read that. I didn't even know that was there. That's really, really cool. I polluted them in their own gifts, and they caused, and in that, if sorry, in that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb, that I might make them desolate, to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land for which I lifted up my hand to give them, when they saw, then, sorry, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered their sacrifices. And there they have, and there their present, and there their presented provocation of their offering. Sorry, I messed that up. There also they made their sweet savour and poured out their drink offerings. And I said unto them, What is the high place whereunto you go? And the name is called there, and the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are you polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when you offer your gifts, and when you make your sons to pass through the fire, you pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And I shall be inquired of by you, O house of Israel. As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Okay, so when all of you people are doing your Christmas and Easter, you are sacrificing your children to these gods. Now, it used to be a physical thing, but now it's become spiritual. But to God, it's the same thing. And he's saying, 
when you seek me, when you pray to me, when you inquire of me, I'm not going to listen. I'm going to turn my face from you. I don't want to hear it. Because you won't listen to me. Why would you think he's going to listen to you if you don't listen to him? Okay. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that that you say. We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring out from you the people and I will gather you out of the countries where, wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Like, come on! (laughs) Seriously, man. If he's going to do it in the second exodus, just repent and enter the covenant now. He's going to bring you into the covenant. The Ten Commandments. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring you, I will bring them forth out of the country wherein they sojourn and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, so he's going to bring you out of the countries where were these scattered you. He's going to put you under the rod, which means his chastisement, his conviction. And then he's going to bring you into covenant. All right. And then those who rebel and transgress against him, they're getting purged out. They're not coming into the uh, millennial reign. They're not coming into the land of the inheritance. They're going to be outside of the kingdom during that millennial reign. They're going to be in the desolations. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go you, serve you everyone his idols, and hereafter also, if you will not hearken unto me, but pollute you my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in my holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them. And there will I require your offerings and your first fruits of your oblations and all your holy things. And I will accept you with sweet savour when I bring you out from the people and gather you from the countries wherein you have been scattered. And I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And all you shall know that I am the Lord when I bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for which I lifted up my hand to give it to your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your doings wherein you have been defiled. And you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that you have committed. That's a hard pill to swallow, to be honest. That one there. To be in the presence of God. Dwelling in the land of Israel dwelling in the inheritance and uh, and to have to see everything that we've all done we will be loathing ourselves and you shall know that I am the Lord when I have wrought with you for my name's sake not according to your wicked ways nor according to your corrupt doings O you house of Israel saith the Lord Okay. Yeah. We're done with Ezekiel. 20 there. Uh okay, Ezekiel 36. This is the last chapter. I was going to do Jeremiah 30 and 31, but we'll leave it at Ezekiel 36. I mean Jeremiah 30 and 31. Well, no, I probably should, really. It's just getting dark, I don't know. If, uh... Okay. 
do that. That helps. Okay. Um, yeah, so Jeremiah, uh, sorry, Ezekiel 36. Um, well, yeah, let's just read it. Also, thou son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, You mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Because the enemy hath said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places, yeah, even the ancient high places are in our possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Because you have made, because they have made you desolate and swallow you up on upon every side that you might be a possession under the residue of the heathen, and you are taken up in the lips of the talkers, and are infamy of the people. Wait, hold on. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, it's so dark. I'm wondering if I can go and park under a, a lamppost or something. I don't know if it's worth trying to do that. They're not even on, which is weird. Okay, sorry. Um, Therefore, you mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, and to the rivers, and to the valleys, and to the desolate waters, and to the cities that are forsaken, which became a prey and derision to the residue of the heathen that are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Edomia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds to cast it out for a prey. Prophesy therefore concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills and to the rivers and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because you have you have borne the shame of the heathen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand, surely the heathen, then that are about you, they shall bear their shame. But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches, and you shall yield fruit to my people of Israel. For there are at for, their, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and you shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply men upon you, and all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the cities shall be inhabited, and the waste, the waste shall be inhabited, shall be builded, sorry. And I will multiply you, I will multiply upon you man and beasts, and they shall increase and bring fruit, and I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee. And thou shalt be, thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of men. Thus saith the Lord God, because they say unto you, the land devourest up men, and hath and hast bereaved thy nations, therefore thou shalt devour men no more. Neither bereave thy nations any more, saith the Lord God. Neither will I cause men to hear in thee the shame of the heathen any more. Neither shalt thou bear the reproach of the people any more. Neither shalt thou cause the nations to fall any more, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore, I poured out my fury upon them for the blood that they shed upon the land, for their idols wherewith they have polluted it. 
and I scattered them among the heathen. And they were dispersed through the countries according to their way and according to their doings, I judged them. And when they entered into the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name, and they went when they when they said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and they have gone forth into they have gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for my holy name which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the heathen, whither you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith, saith the Lord God when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take of you from among the heathen, and I will gather you out of all countries, and I will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness, and from all your idols, will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart of flesh, and I will give you a heart of and I will, sorry, I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my judgments, and you shall keep my, uh, walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will save you from all uncleanness, and I will call for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and increase of the field. And you shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. Then shall you remember that your, then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good. And you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations. Not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord, but be it known unto you. Sorry, not for not for your sakes do I this, saith the Lord, be it known unto you. Be ashamed and confounded for your own ways, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I in the day uh, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and in the waste and the waste shall be builded, and the desolate land shall be tilled. Whereas it lay desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, This is the this land that was desolate is become like the Garden of Eden, and the waste and desolate and the ruined cities are become fenced and inhabited. Then the heathen that are left round about you shall know that I the Lord builded the ruin build the ruined places and plant that 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 was desolate. I the Lord have spoken it, and I will do it. Thus saith the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like flock, as the holy flock, as the flock of Jerusalem in her solemn feasts. So shall the waste cities be filled with the flocks of men, and they shall know that I am the Lord. 